Ah, I, I, I can't even bear to look at this. This is just unbearable. You got something, something I can never be without, yeah. Oh, it's just so gruesome. Oh, the bear. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. You know, whenever I'm in Chinatown or the weather gets colder or it's a random Monday, I always crave some hot pot. And I always feel like a hot pot experience is really not complete without some milk tea or bubble tea afterwards. But did you know, you could have both at the same time. And I'm not just talking about having a milk tea or bubble tea with your hot pot. I'm talking about a milk tea hot pot. Let's go. So this is the milk tea hot pot. It comes in two versions. One is matcha, which is uh, combined with their famous tomato broth, which is really good here. The other one is just pure milk tea broth, and that is paired with that spicy, delicious looking cute little bear that's eventually gonna sacrifice itself for our delicious hot pot needs. First step in eating the hot pot, and there's a lot of steps, is uh, you gotta drink the broth inside the yeah. hot pot, right? So we got a straw, and what you're supposed to do is insert the straw past the cheese foam into the broth itself. And you wanna go all the way past this outer layer. I'm very excited to try. I feel like I'm doing something naughty here because I'm about to share this with people. You guys don't care about double dipping or triple dipping or my, my you know, saliva all over the hot pot, right? Okay. Wow. That is milky, matcha-y, and very delicious-y. So what we're gonna do first is uh, we're adding the sweet ingredients in here, and then we're adding the savory ingredients. The sweet ingredients includes everything from Oreo cookies to red bean to bubbles. Of course, there's a bubble milk tea, some jelly. And then the savory items include some pork floss, beef, and like spicy fried dough. I'm really curious to see how this all goes inside. And then the manager here, Mr. Wong, is gonna put it together for us. Bubbles are going in right now. The quality of their foam is very good. Otherwise, the stuff is gonna be sinking to the bottom already. And he's just tossing the red bean on and the foam is catching it like a white fluffy trampoline. And then the savory item is going in on top of the sweet items. We do have some things left. What do we do with Oreo? Let's actually take the Oreo. Okay, so you're supposed to take the Oreo and dip it in the in the foam on top yeah. and eat it with the milk foam. What do we do with the beef? We're gonna dip the beef inside and eat the beef like that. Yeah. Alright, let's let's dip an Oreo. And I'm gonna be a little civilized about this and <laughs> use a chopstick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the craziest hot pot experience I've had. Sweet Oreo, creamy, milky foam, and a little popping bubble. That's good. good. I mean, it's nothing bad about anything I just said. It's all good. So after that, um, we're gonna mix this up and then put it into these, these cups, right? Yeah. And we can drink the bubble tea basically like a bubble tea with the salty floss and everything. And then the savory items is gonna highlight the sweetness and make it a little more interesting. Never ever had bubbled milk tea with pork floss, with spicy little noodles in there, especially not with beef, but I'm willing to try everything. That's actually good, a little sweet, a little savory. That texture is great. I'm gonna have to start putting meat floss in my milk tea. What I have in my hand is basically all those ingredients mixed together with the milk broth, with the milk tea, and with the pork floss and like all these savory stuff in here. But you really can't taste any of the meat flavor. It's just really sweet and nice. It's creamy, it's smooth, 
Yeah, it's it's very rich. Beans are soft. You got chewy bubbles. It doesn't have any of the weirdness that you might think because it has all that savory item in there as well as the sweet. This is step two. First, you dip your Oreo, then you drink some of the broth, and then when that boils, we're dipping the beef in there. Yeah. Let's do it. This side is basically like the Hulk. And when, it, when you give it some heat, made it a little angry, heated it up, it turned green. So ingredients, we have fried tofu skin, bamboo fungus, Chinese uh, veggie roots, and black sesame tofu yeah, shaped yeah. like Stonehenge basically. And there's a special blend of hot oil. All right, and the first thing um, you suggest dipping is the beef. You know And I'm supposed to eat this by covering the entire meat, submerging it in hot oil. And I happily oblige. This is like a Cinderella transformation. I mean, something that's already beautiful has just become glorious. That's a tender piece of meat. Wow. You taste the spice, you taste the sauce, obviously. Then the gentleness, tenderness of the meat. As you're chewing it, it starts turning a little sweet. I mean, it's almost like eating like a clam. You get that natural little sweetness, but it's not, but it's coming from the milk tea. That beef is like my dad. A little hot, but inside, all tender and in a tad subtly sweet. We're basically dipping everything in their signature hot oil sauce. And the purpose of this is basically, it's gonna highlight the subtle sweetness more when you're tasting a little spicy, a little savoriness. This is one of my favorite ingredients because the dry tofu, it soaks up so much of that broth. So I'm expecting to taste a lot of that milk tea broth right now. Yeah, as I expected, that was all milk tea. You can taste all that creamy, sweet, awesomeness soaked into that tofu skin. It's almost like the spiciness become second fiddle. So you don't taste the spicy first, you definitely taste all that milk tea stuff first. That was a good bite. The rest, I'm just gonna add the ingredients in there. This is one of my favorite ingredients. This is the bamboo fungus, <laughs> crispy, and then you guys stuffed uh, xia shrimp inside, right? Yeah. My favorite one. Because that not only soaks up the milk tea, the shrimp provides also a bit of sweetness. So you get two different kinds of sweetness in that. That's a good ingredient. Yeah, good job on that. <laughs> Gotta use some veggies. And of course, like everything that's dipped in there, it's gonna come out, it's gonna cover, be covered in like strong milk tea flavor. That's great. You guys hear this thing crunching in my mouth? Great if you love matcha and you love hot pot and you're lazy, you don't want to get two of them separately. Efficiency. Right here, we're Chinese. We're the masters of efficiency. That's why we invented this, we got lazy. Again, if you love matcha, this is for you. But you guys also have a milk tea night, huh? Pop pot. Yeah. Coming right up. This is the milk tea hot pot with the little bear. This is the spicy, so it's, it's, it's in combination with the spicy little bear. Adorable, but it will make the ultimate sacrifice for us. And the other side is donned with Oreos on top, and the powder is, I think, uh, tiramisu and chocolate. Chocolate is a tiramisu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thin. And then there's the same uh, foam on top. The milk tea here is just a regular milk tea, not matcha. Push it matcha. Yeah, put it matcha. Same thing, drink the broth first. Yeah. It's good tea flavor. Of course, there's no none of the matcha stuff, but I feel like this one is a slightly less sweet than the last one. The tea flavor is much more pronounced. Just like last time, all the ingredients are going in. Ingredients are added. We're about to, sorry, little bear. Your sacrifice will be reminded in every single bite I take of this hot pot. Oh, it's just so gruesome. Oh, the bear. Ah, oh, I, I, I can't even bear to look at this. This is just unbearable. I'll shut up now. 
So all the ingredients is mixed up into this cup. Yeah. This is like a bubble milk tea milkshake, basically. So don't use any tea powder. They use actual tea to make this broth. You can taste the tea. This is good. I like this better than the matcha one. It's thick though. I mean, I, I feel like if I drink this, I'm not lactose intolerant. My lactose intolerance will come back because it is very milky. And there's more ingredients in here. There's like taro balls. So now we're going to boil everything and then start dipping ingredients in and we're going to start with the beef. Uh, again, dip the beef and cover it in hot oil. And you usually just one bite. Right? Yeah. One bite. Yes. This guy, that's why we're going to be good friends. Every single thing I take out of hot bite, he's like, you got to eat in one bite. As if there's other ways to do it. Mm. You can taste the tea flavor more. I, I like this broth a lot better than the matcha one. Definitely taste the milk tea flavor. Oh yeah, it's creamy tofu, a different type of creamy, milky and creamy. Now, right, Mr. Yang here he also told me something that's so amazingly cool about what we're doing here. We are making milk tea rice. Yeah. After everything's boiled, I'm just trying out a few ingredients, but if you try out a bunch of different, different more ingredients, put into the milk tea broth and then make your rice, it's gonna taste even better. But let's see how this is made. So inside this, there's some chili oil, their homemade chili oil, and then some of the ingredients like the taro, little bubbles, some of the milk tea broth is all mixed into this. Milk tea hot oil rice. Wow, this is good. Leaving me a little speechless right now is because there's so many things interesting in here. It's sweet rice and spicy and a little milky. I don't even know how really to describe this. I mean, it's a good rice dish. I feel like I need some beef on top of this as well to make it even better. It's basically like I took some rice, poured my bubble tea into here, added some hot oil, and here we are. Which, come on, none of those things you can hate. That's all in this bowl. I would recommend eating this, putting some beef on top of it, even more delicious. I think if we added more ingredients in here, make the broth even more flavorful, even more deep, this will be even better. Right now, it's still pretty good, but once you eat a full meal, this can definitely be leveled up even more. Thanks so much, Mr. Young. Thank you. This is like a great experience eating this uh, milk tea hot pot. And this is something you guys will push out and it'll be limited quality to Xian Liang, right? Yeah. So they will only have about 20 to 30 days a day. This is actually a really interesting experience. I mean, these guys started making the milk tea hot pot in China. You mean, since started in China. This is the first time it's coming to America. See, it's not a sponsor job. I just came here because like this is really something I wanted to try. This is by far the most creative hot pot I've ever experienced in my life. Like, how do you even think about it? You think about it? bubble tea and hot pot. This is what we want to make the sweet and sweet and sweet. It's more of a Well, you hit it out of the park. This is not only just like such a creative, fun experience. It's also delicious. You guys really need to come and try this. You haven't even think about it. So there's no price on this yet, so I can't tell you that. But whatever it is, come and try this. The information for this place is, of course, listed in my description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, bye. Bye-bye.